How's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome to the uh, second episode of To Buy or Not To Buy. I've actually got a few things that I want to go over. Let me actually get these off. It's kind of uncomfortable uh, in this video. Um, if my son over here won't get too loud, he seems pretty occupied at the moment. But uh, I mean, who knows? Um, first thing I want to do is uh, this right here. So, I'm a huge fan of Contest of Champions. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows what that is. Uh, I've actually got 10 different accounts. Um, I've got one account that I mainly play, uh, but I've been playing it for about four years now, and it's just, I don't know, it's a game I like to play. Uh, it's a lot like a fighting game, uh, Injustice Gods Among Us, things like that, but it's pretty cool. So, this is actually a statue that I picked up from GameStop, once again, shout out to uh, the crew over at GameStop. They are an amazing crew, and they're, I don't know, they're always looking out for me. So get out my badass Leatherman wave. And uh, cut the top of this guy open. Man, this thing's like a razor blade, I love it. Stick that right there. I'm gonna pop this open. So I've actually got a couple of the statues from uh, this company right here. It's a uh, Premium Collectible Studios, PCS. That's the brand right there. Um, I've actually got the Marvel Contest of Champions Deadpool one, and he's got like a little unicorn that sits up on his shoulder. It's like the 30th anniversary um, edition of the the character. But, uh, the, the company that does these statues overall, they do pretty good. To me, it's like the best bargain that you can get. Uh, they're fairly cheap. They're not ridiculously expensive. They're fairly detailed. They're... Typical, like I explained in the last video, this is commonly what you're going to see with uh, statues from here on out and like I said provides a lot of cushion and uh, security for the statue but uh, for this this costs about $30 not too expensive but not too cheap either it, 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 it's pretty sturdy material and as you can see it's fairly Actually, it's really detailed for the, the price that it is. And I have quite a few statues from this, this company. In fact, a large majority of my statues come from this company. Uh, overall, they're probably my favorite. Uh, next to Good Smile and Max Factory. I, I have seen um, a couple of new studios coming out. Uh, I think one of them is called the Iron Studios. But now you're you're talking like the hundred and fifty to fifteen hundred dollar range for uh, collectibles and, and statues and whatnot. But this is a character called Venom Pool. I had to get him mainly just because I have the Deadpool as well. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of Marvel Contest the Champions. It's a mobile game on the iOS and Android. But uh, I have quite a few statues from this game. I've got the uh, the Deadpool. Uh, I've got a Gamerverse uh, collectible set. It's the Collector and the Iron Patriot. But uh, I'm not going to lie. In the game, he's not that great of a character. Uh, he, he's pretty low. But for a statue, he's badass. You know, you get Deadpool and Venom mixed together. And I mean, what more could you ask for? Like I said, he's probably going to go right up there with my other Deadpool. I don't know. I'll try to get a shot of him. If you can see him. He's right here. Let's see. I don't think I can zoom in. No, I can't zoom in. And I'm sitting down in an incredibly uncomfortable chair. But, uh. I highly recommend this. I know GameStop is selling them, so if you get an opportunity to pick one up, uh, GameStop's always having like these really cool uh, collectible sales and stuff like that, where it's like 20% off 
all collectibles toys and statues i know it, it, it's fairly often like i said always just go down to your local gamestop not only are you supporting businesses in your area uh but at the same time it's a good place to uh meet people that are in, in the same things that you are and there's a, a few employees that work over at gamestop that i i've got something in common with uh, one of them i know the manager over there she's really cool and she geeks out on statues like i do and i always appreciate her because she points out the coolest statues that are coming out and then a couple of the other guys are you know into uh anime and stuff like that and they always point me in the direction of the new coolest anime coming out uh in fact one of them recommended uh that I watch a show called Fire Force, uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. I liked that show. It was a really cool show. But uh, I'm going to move on to the next thing because I have quite a few things that I want to go through. This is a Funko. I, I don't really want to, to do Funkos on, on this segment. I want to try to kind of avoid those just because they're... I don't know. I, it, they're gimmicky collectible. And it's hard for me to say that because I collect them. I have around 300 right now at the moment. I don't have the world's largest collection, but I know I don't have the world's smallest collection either, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm a huge fan of this. When I saw this movie at the age of like eight years old for the first time, uh, it actually really piqued my interest in uh, marine biology and sharks and all that stuff. And I used to get made fun of as a kid. Not like made fun of, picked on, made fun of, but like, oh, hey, here comes Shark Boy. But I saw this and I, I had to get it. Like I said, I'm not going to open it. I don't open my Funkos. Um, as you can see, I've got a whole wall of them over here and that's not even all of them. That's probably only 50% of my collection over there. But like I said, uh... I'm getting to a point now where I only collect the ones that are like significant and this does come with a set and I do actually have the shark biting the tank from the second one but I mean this is just such a freaking cool scene that I, I had to get it I mean this was a must but they're getting a lot more intricate with what their uh, Funkos are doing. I saw one the other day that it was the ending segment from Return of the Jedi where it was uh, Ghost Anakin, Ghost Yoda, and Ghost Obi-Wan all standing like they are at the end of the movie. I wish it was the original Anakin, but they went with the Hayden Christensen scene. I'm not gonna lie, I really did not like him in that movie. Darth Vader to me was this man who was above and Hayden Christensen came in with his life as a house mentality and whining and crying and I know I'm not the only one that's thinking that but uh nevertheless I I digress but super cool uh for any Jaws fan uh let's see what else uh so this one I'm actually uh super stoked about so it's a Miles Morales, and I'm not sure what the company is, because it's in, I think, is that Japanese? If somebody watches this, hopefully they can explain that. But uh, it's a GameStop exclusive. Like I said, if you get the opportunity, go and check out what your local GameStop has to offer. They have so many cool things, and they're really trying to move outside the realm of just buying and selling video games. Um, with the digital age upon us, uh, they're really trying to step in and have CCG tournaments like Magic and Pokemon and D&D uh, &D tournaments as well. And they're also stepping into the realm of apparel with uh, shirts and shoes and uh, getting into just fun collectibles. I, I bought my wife an Animal Crossing set that had like an Animal Crossing coffee mug and like a, a little uh, necklace or something and a notepad. Uh, just fun things to get friends or yourself, you know, on holidays. But 
I, I will say this every video. I urge you to go check out your local GameStop. Um, they're all gamers and nerds just like we are. Uh, so just give them the opportunity. Um, I know the people at my GameStop are like, hey, check this out. Bam, we found this rummaging around on the internet. And it's this cool-ass Assassin's Creed statue. I mean, I, I can't afford it. It's like $1,600, but still, I mean, it was just amazing to see. Thank you, Caitlin, for that one. I really wish I could get that statue because uh, it's extremely detailed. So this was really cool. Um, it was a little pricey, uh, but still, it's a, it's a uh, basically a statue that comes with a few different uh, pieces and you can assemble this however you want. So we're gonna slide this open. I'll probably get rid of this box. There's only certain boxes I like to keep. Um, I think in the last video I said that I was gonna show you guys the uh, Sonic the Hedgehog that I have that's in a really cool box. But um, if I don't forget, I'm not sure exactly what this is right here. I think this is a... Uh, Do, do, do what is this oh it's like a little no it's an assembly uh thing these are all the different parts and pieces and stuff like that that it comes with um but let's uh check this out so it looks like it comes in a double stacked box uh there's pieces underneath too as well So um, in the future too, if anybody wants to know, because a lot of these statues and collectibles, they come with a lot of smaller pieces, especially Max Factory. Max Factory is notorious for coming with a bunch of extra little pieces uh, that, you know, you don't want to lose or something like that. So what I did is I went down to Home Depot and I bought like a, a Home Depot or not a Home uh, DeWalt milwaukee like one of those screw boxes that you can put different screws and nuts and bolts or bits or whatever and i bought two of them that actually interconnect and you can swap out all the pieces on the inside to make compartments bigger or smaller and i got one of those to put all my little extra pieces in uh this is actually looking really intricate um so here's the uh the main figure right here and I forgot what the word is, but it's where you have all these different points that move around. Like you can pop off the uh, wrists, I think. And then, uh, yep, see, you pop off the wrists and you can put them in all these different sorts of positions, like all the joints and the toe. Actually, this is far detailed than what I usually get because I never see where you're able to bend the toes like that. Um... So that, that's uh, really cool right there. I, I'm not going to pull all the pieces out right now. I just want to give you guys like a general idea of um, what to expect when you get this. So he's got all... Oh, ooh, okay. I won't forget that. Um, be careful when opening. I lost a few of the pieces. But uh, we'll do this right here. See, so you can change out his torso and all that other fun stuff usually the pieces are in there a lot more than that you really have to pop them out but uh it looks like you can change him from uh black suit spider-man uh all the way back to miles morales fully kitted and everything and why he has the uh spider ham mallet i i don't know that's that's I'm kind of at a loss at that one, but you have like a, a, a hand with a tag can. And like I said, these are all really, really detailed. Like if you look, you can see Miles Morales has got a lot of detail in, in his face. I don't know how well you guys can see that. It's probably focusing on my face. So, but like even his hair, his hair is extremely detailed. Like you can see individual curls and poops and stuff like that. Uh, really amazing figure right here. And uh, let's see what else it 
came with. I think it came with a whole other section underneath. Oh yeah, here we go. So it comes with the platform and generally with these uh, figures, statues or collectibles, whatever you want to call it, they have a platform that will have like a hole or something in it. And then it has like a, a, a post that will slide in and it's got an arm that hangs off of it with a, a peg on it. And then you can adjust the figure however you want. Really creative, uh, and in my opinion, very ingenious. Because then you can you decide how the statue is is going to stand or look or, or what it's doing and all that. Um, but uh, let me see. I'm gonna make sure I didn't drop any pieces under my chair or anything. Because I think I did. Uh, Let's see, this one is one. Oh, you got him? Okay. So I'm super excited for this one right here. Uh, this is a Bloodborne CCG. Uh, those of you guys that know me, I'm a huge FromSoft fan. Um, Mainly Soulsborne. I, I do have other titles from FromSoft that I really like, like the Tenchu uh, games. But I first played Sekiro about two and a half, or when it came out. I went and bought it like two weeks after it came out. And I remember when I got back into video games, I always heard, you know, I, I was used, I hadn't played games in a long time. Uh, I stepped out of being a nerd for a little bit, and I was a knucklehead for like a decade and was doing other things I shouldn't have been doing. But when I got back into gaming, you know, I was like, I'm used to Mario and Zelda and, you know, Super Mario. Actually, Golden and I was right about the time that I stepped out. You know, to me, that was what where I had left off in the, the video game community. Golden Eye, um, Ocarina of Time, Resident Evil, Tomb Raider for the PS1. You know, games like that, Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. Oh my God, all my friends were playing that. It drove me nuts because I had gotten to a time period where I wanted to be outside and all my friends were just, oh, nope, we gotta level up that materia, gotta level up that materia. And I, I hated it for a long time. But I get back into gaming and I'm playing things like God of War and I keep hearing this, oh, you wanna break your controller, play Dark Souls. Or you think you're hard at games, play Dark Souls. Or you think you're you're a gamer, play some Dark Souls. And I never really played them. At the time, I wasn't really into the medieval thing. I was into uh, games like Destiny and Halo. Not necessarily first-person shooters, but games out in space where you had cool weaponry and... Uh, I remember Borderlands was another big one. And I remember my stepbrother going, dude, there's like a million guns and it's almost impossible to get the same gun twice. And, uh, you know, it really blew my mind. Um, so when about a month after Sekiro came out, my friend went and bought it and he told me, uh, he, you know, if you're really into uh, feudal Japan, medieval Japan, uh, check this game out. It takes place in the Sengoku period. So I went and bought it and I played it for like an hour. And I was like, nope. I ended up breaking a controller at the uh, main guy. Uh, not the main guy. Uh, the ogre at the beginning. The red-eyed ogre that's chained up. Uh, yeah, he threw me off the cliff like 20 times. And I broke my controller and I was like, okay, no more FromSoft games. But then like six months later, out of nowhere, I was like, you know what? Bink, I put it in. And I just, I started getting into this rhythm and I fell in love with it. And then somebody was like, man, if you like that game, try Bloodborne. So I was like, oh, okay. And I think Bloodborne was like the free game of the month or something at the time on PS Plus. So I downloaded it and I, I tried it and I was like, oh my God, then, you know, this is amazing. And then the PS5 came out and Demon Souls came out. And I'm telling you right now, if you haven't played Demon Souls, the remake, I don't know about the original, but my God, the remake is easily one of my top favorite things. I mean, the game was beautifully done. Uh, it was just enough to, to keep me interested and not lose my interest at the same time. And, you know, I'm playing that, and then I went out and I bought the Dark Souls trilogy, 
and I burned through all those and I just now I'm like so excited for Elden Ring but you know I was talking um with the guys down at GameStop and then they I was given this as a gift uh from one of them you know that that's how amazing these people are that you know it's not like this corporate business almost like I I I don't want to necessarily, I would consider them friends. You know what I mean? And I know it's business when I go in there, but still. Um, I don't know. I just really appreciate them. They, uh, me stepping back into the nerd community away from the, uh, the previous lifestyle that I was living. They have really made it easy and i i'm not trying to fluff their their ego or anything like that they're just they're amazing people but uh pop this open and i had actually been eyeballing this on um whatchamacallit uh amazon for quite a while and hopefully one of these days I will find a group of people to play it with. But here we go. Here's the back right there. There's actually a more intricate version on Facebook. It's like a, almost like a, like Risk, but Bloodborne. Um, so here we go. We have the, uh, the rule book right here it's a pretty uh nice little rule book now so what i this is is it's basically like a ccg but it'd be like if you got magic the gathering and monopoly and mixed them together almost that's pretty much what it's like so here are i'm guessing like life counters you pop them all out um i mean and they're these pieces are, are really thick these aren't just some you know, little chintzy pieces that'll break. They're they're pretty uh, solid pieces. But then you got your little, uh, a couple of them popped out already. I accidentally poked them with my finger, but your little Bloodborne character. And uh, from now on, I'm gonna try to start making these videos a lot shorter. But I just, I had a, I got really sick. We got COVID. And it shut us down for like a week or so. So I'm trying to play catch up right now. And, and that's exactly what I'm talking about right there. You know, I got super sick and a couple of things went down and, and GameStop was like, we got your back. So I'm assuming that these are like game boards. You know what I mean? That, uh, you know, like you've got it in front of you and here's your melee action and and all that, uh, I'm gonna have to go through and figure out the the rules on this, but um, it, it's almost like it's a very basic Dungeons and Dragons style game. Here, you know, here's the deck of cards right here, and you've got blood tokens right here. You actually get a couple bags of them. Some are bigger than others, it looks like, right here. Yeah, these ones, the smaller bag has the bigger pieces. Um, it's got, uh, I'm assuming that these are where the, uh, the tokens go after you open it up, maybe. Uh, but then it's got the die, and um, you got little pegs here. Oh, okay, so these slide into those circle things with the numbers on them, and I'm guessing you spin them. Okay. Um, very, very cool. Uh, if you're into things like Magic the Gathering, I, I'm assuming that you would really like this just because it's uh i mean shit it's bloodborne you know what i mean um if, if, if you don't like bloodborne then you're a communist but uh but uh but uh but if i'm saying uh too much let me know i get nervous with this kind of stuff i'm not really a public speaker and uh anyway so really cool
Um, I'm hoping I get to uh, check it out soon. And this is an actually, it's a PlayStation licensed product. So it's not like it's some cheap knockoff product done by some chintzy ass company that you've never heard of. That, but that's pretty much what it looks like set up. So I'm assuming that these are like counters and then you have your cards in front of you and you've got your charts. And then uh, I thought it was like a board game. I didn't know that there wasn't a board. So this is a lot more like magic than I thought, but it's just got additional pieces played into it. I think there are some expansions that you can buy to go along with this at well. I know the other edition does have expansions, not the, uh, the, the card game version, but the other version. There's also a Dark Souls version too. I'd be super stoked if they came out with a Sekiro one. I'm gonna tell you all right now, I fucking love Sekiro. I'm gonna try not to use the F word and shit on here, but I love Sekiro. So I saw this and it was already built and I'll probably show it in my next video after it's built because there's a lot of small pieces. But uh, this right here, I'm, I'm a big fan of One Piece. I really dig the show. I know it's kind of uh, uh, kiddish in a way, but I really dig it. I think it's funny. It's something that you can watch with the kids. That's not too out there and weird. But uh, they actually had this set up in GameStop. And I was like, whoa, where'd you guys get that? And they showed me. But here's the, uh, it comes with a whole bunch of different pieces. And then, uh, like the stickers and all that. And it's a, a ship that you actually build. And you you, you build the, the, the water and it's got waves that crash around it and everything. But it's a really, really cool design. And I thought that it looked amazing. And the, the construction of it is pretty damn sturdy. They actually let me hold the one over at the store. And... It didn't feel like it would fall apart or anything like that. It didn't feel like any of the pieces were loose. But I, I figured I'll show this again. I don't know if you guys can get a good clear picture of it. There should be one of the rear and one of the front. But I, I think it's really fun. Uh, it's a, a Bandai licensed product. So once again, it's not just some chintzy ass statue from, or, you know, Thing from some random company that you've never heard it wasn't too expensive either it was about $30 uh, totally worth it totally worth it uh, that and that's one thing I forgot to do too everything that I've shown you guys so far I, I would totally buy uh, there isn't really anything the spider-man thing was a little bit pricey and I bought it just because I'm a huge fan of stuff like that and it's a really detailed statue. If you're not that much into figures and all that, it's probably not for you. Uh, for someone like me, totally worth it. Uh, the, and same thing with the game reverse thing. If you're not really that into statues or th this mainly, I'm a huge fan of Contest of Champions. I'm a huge fan of Venom Pool. I'm a huge fan of the company that does the statues. And if you're like me, then I would totally suggest this for you. If you're, if you don't even know what Contest of Champions is, and you're like iffy on Venom Pool, uh, I would say probably go out and find something better for um, what you got in your wallet. But like I said, I'm a fan of all of these things, and I'm a, a collector of just weird off the wall things. So, yeah, and th this is the last thing I've got right here. I actually got this for my wife. We have about 15 different versions of this game because this is her favorite board game. Uh, I've got a Stranger Things version. We have a Naruto version. We've got a Destiny ver No, I'm sorry. We've got Destiny Chess. Uh, but we've got, let's see, Stranger Things, Naruto. We've got the Dragon Ball one. Uh... Uh, regular and then there's like the go version but it's animal crossing monopoly if you're a fan of monopoly like my wife is then this is totally for you i'm gonna bust out my handy dandy leatherman wave 
I will always recommend these right here. This knife has literally saved my life and my daughter's life as well. When my daughter was about two, we were involved in a pretty bad car accident and the car flipped upside down and caught on fire. Uh, when I finally came back to uh, whatever was leaking into the car I was burning my lungs so I couldn't kick out the front window we had slid into like a hill and the front of the car upside down like conformed perfectly to the hill and I used this to bust out a side window now I recommend this to anybody and everybody that uh, I possibly can. So here's all the little cards right here. It's just basically Monopoly. And then you have all the extra little pieces right here. I'll open these up so I can show you guys. I apologize if my kids are being too loud. They all come in a cool little bag. And then here's what the figures look like right here. Very, very cool. Uh, I am actually surprised. I already know what they look like because I, I saw somebody open up one down at the store. But for just a Monopoly game, the, these pieces are very intricate and uh, detailed. There I go again with the uh, uh. And then here we go. There's another one. Let me see. There's only four of these figures. And I don't know why. Let me put these in the bags. I think this is mainly just meant. It's a lot smaller than I feel the regular monopoly boxes but uh here's i'm assuming all the money and the tokens and all that and then here's the, i don't think this is played like traditional monopoly actually because it doesn't have like any houses or hotels or anything but there's the board right there very small board like i said it's not it doesn't feel like an actual monopoly size i know that it being on camera doesn't do it any justice but it, it almost it reminds me of uh those like monopoly travel versions that you would take in the car with you so uh very cool very unique and like i said my wife is a huge fan of monopoly so i always try to buy these intricate versions but she's also the only video game that she's played in the last 20 years is animal crossing we got the animal crossing switch and all that specifically for her because she's such a huge fan of it but uh we actually got it for the kids and she started playing it one day and became addicted and for six months, I didn't have a wife. I had a video game addict for a partner. But uh, if you like Monopoly and you like Animal Crossing, I would definitely recommend this. It's definitely something that's out of the ordinary and a fun experience for you and the family, like on a Friday night or you and all your friends uh, when you're out drinking and all that stuff. I hope that you guys get the opportunity to check some of these things out. Uh, I will try to show as many things as I possibly can. And uh, thank you guys for showing up. And you have a good night.